Recently, I caught one of our clients making a tax mistake with their Roth conversion, and I thought we would share that with you today. You see, people who make a backdoor Roth conversion can set themselves up to pay taxes twice on the same money because of this aggregation rule that I'm going to describe in this video. If you pay a tax two times on the same money and you never know it, no big deal because you didn't know you did it, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, that happens to some people because if you don't pay attention, you don't, you don't ever really know. The real kicker is that people think they're contributing to a Roth, high earner specifically, and they see that money going into the Roth, but something is happening to their tax filing that's potentially going to come back and bite them. So I'm going to tell you exactly what that mistake is. And I'm going to give you three ways to get around it. So you'll know if it's happened to you, you'll avoid making this mistake and maybe you'll know a way to get around it. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is a backdoor Roth contribution and why do people do it? What is that big mistake? And then what are some ways to get around making that mistake? But first, if we haven't met yet, I'm Nick Davis, founder of Brindle and Bay Wealth Management. We are thoughtful financial planners who want you to retire with calmness and clarity. And so if you want to see messages like this on your YouTube feed, do yourself a favor and do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so that the recommendation will pop back up for you again in the future. Thanks for doing that. All right, full disclosure, before we get started, this is not tax advice for you. If you do backdoor Roth contributions, I'm not giving you a complete guide on how to do that in this video. I think that this is one of those areas where there's, uh, I'm not going to give you a whole exhaustive guide on what to look out for. So don't take this as personal advice for you. I know it can seem as simple as put money into a traditional IRA and then convert it to a Roth IRA. You know, and in many cases it can be that simple, but there are some gotchas that I'm not going to cover in this video. What I am going to do though, is I'm going to tell you a major mistake people make because we caught one of our clients making this mistake and maybe you can avoid it. All right. So what is a backdoor Roth conversion and why do people do them? Well, higher income earners above a certain threshold, you're not allowed to contribute directly to a Roth IRA. In fact, in that same case, you can't contribute to a traditional IRA and be able to deduct that off your taxes. Now, don't confuse this for a Roth 401k because there are higher thresholds and there are no income earning limits if you are a uh, for a Roth 401k. I'm speaking specifically to people who put money into a non-deductible traditional IRA and then they shortly thereafter converted into a Roth IRA. Now, they accomplish the same thing that a person who isn't high income accomplishes by putting money directly into a Roth IRA. They just have to do this one extra step. Now, I will say that these backdoor Roth conversions may become more extinct because the Secure 2.0 is actually, first of all, it didn't eliminate this backdoor Roth conversion, which everybody was waiting to see if it would. And it didn't. In fact, the Secure 2.0 uh, promoted Roth a little bit more. So coming in 2024, you'll be able to have a SEP Roth, which SEP allows self-employed people to contribute a lot larger amounts of money to that uh, particular type of account than just a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. The Secure 2.0 also expanded the um, Roth by saying that their 401ks are going to have to re be required to have a Roth 401k account available to people and high earners are not going to be able to use their catch up in the tax deductible uh, environment. They're going to have to put it into the Roth 401k for their catch up. So more Roth is coming our way. I think we'll see less of these Roth, these backdoor Roth conversions. You might have made a mistake though, or you might still potentially make a mistake. So that's why I want to point out what that big mistake is. So the problem that I'm speaking of is, is caused by the IRS account aggregation rule. And basically what it says is that you have to aggregate all of your IRA dollars 
if you have non-deductible IRA money and you can't convert dollar for dollar, it has to be a pro rata conversion. So what you want to happen is you want $7,000 to go in and $7,000 to get converted. But what really happens is uh, you actually have some taxable basis in your IRA that you have to track or you could pay taxes on it twice. Now, this only matters if you're high income and you have a traditional IRA or a SEP IRA, okay? So there's no problem if you don't, but most people, many people have traditional IRAs. Even if you have a super small traditional IRA, this account aggregation rule could affect your conversion. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so what you want to happen is you've got this let me change my color here. You've got this non-deductible traditional IRA because you make too much money to deduct your contribution and you contribute, let's say $7,000 and you think it's going to just uh, convert over and you're gonna have $7,000 in your Roth IRA. The problem though is right here, okay? The problem is if you have another IRA and it is a deductible IRA, which is probably what it is, and let's just pretend there's $200,000 in there. Okay, that's where the problem is going to begin. So you've got $7,000. You place that $7,000 into the non-qualified traditional IRA. A few months later or a few weeks later, you do some paperwork and you send it over to a Roth and you want that $7,000 to show up there, which it does, but where's the mistake? What could go wrong? Well, and pardon my, I, people have complained about my handwriting, so pardon my, uh, my handwriting here, it's about as good as it can get. So I will practice to make it better for you, but basically, if you can just look at my, my chicken scratch here, you have $7,000 that goes in, it goes into a non-deductible traditional IRA, this $7,000, does transfer over to the Roth, but something happens to the basis. So you have this deductible traditional IRA that has $200,000 in it. Well, you have to, uh, what happens in reality is the $7,000 does get attributed to the Roth IRA, but only $238 uh, really gets converted because 6762 in this example goes to the basis of the 200,000, which means that of this two hundred thousand dollars, now sixty-seven sixty-two is taxable. Uh, I'm sorry, it's after tax. So if we don't pay attention to this, we could get taxed on it twice. And the way that this happened is, and here's the pro rata rule in, in action: you got seven thousand dollars. You have to add it to the two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so two hundred seven. The two of set the seven thousand dollar contribution divided by the two hundred seven now, meaning the total of all your IRAs equals three point four percent. Now, of the seven thousand dollars, we can only get three point four percent of that to actually uh, be excluded, which is giving us the remainder. If we go back here, we we see that remainder amount of sixty sixty seven sixty two is now after tax basis in our traditional IRA. We need to track this ongoing. Okay, track it, or you could pay taxes two times. Not an easy video, not a great concept to explain, but it it's a problem and it happens. What's deceptive about this is that you, the, 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 the person, sees the money going to the Roth IRA, but unless you are looking at Form 8606 in your 1040 filing and knowing that you're, you're tracking your basis properly, um, when your tax preparer goes to take money out of the $200,000, if you distribute that IRA later, more likely they'll just assume that it hasn't been taxed yet because most IRA money hasn't been taxed. So the key would be to keep up with whatever that basis is so that you can exclude it from taxes because then it would be taxed on a pro rata basis uh, coming out as well. Now, there is a way around this. Uh, I'm going to give you three ways to get around this if you're making these backdoor Roth contributions and you have a traditional IRA. So the very first way around this is the easiest way, and that is don't do them. Use a Roth 401k or the upcoming SEP Roth instead, okay? 
The second thing you could do is you could roll it into your 401k temporarily if your 401k pro allows that. So in some cases, a person might be able to roll their, their traditional IRA into their 401k plan. Now that aggregation rule isn't going to apply and they can then make those contributions. The third way to do it is just to do it under your spouse's name. So if your spouse does not have traditional IRAs or SEP IRAs, you could just do it under their name. So you can make a non-deductible contribution and a, uh, a conversion in that example. So lots of rules to pay attention to. You might want to go back and look at your previous year's taxes to see if this has ever happened to you. You definitely want to be aware if you're moving forward and you're going to be doing these um, backdoor Roth contributions. Now, to be clear, what's included in this aggregation rule is the traditional IRA and the SEP IRA. What is not included, which is not going to affect this, is the 401k spousal IRAs, inherited IRAs, and Roth IRAs. These are not going to be aggregated. So these are not going to count for this rule. Again, it's not tax advice. It's just general warning. Watch out for that. If you've done that before, go to your tax person, go to your advisor, be, look, be on the lookout in case that happens. So what can you do next? Well, if you're thinking about making this type of contribution, ask yourself the question, do I have any traditional IRAs or SEP IRAs? Or consider using another, one of these other alternatives. Secondarily, go back and take a look at your 1040 and see if you can track any uh, after-tax basis in your IRAs. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, you might like the video I did about people who lose their Roth benefits. That's right. People don't take advantage of their Roth benefits and are essentially just losing them. And I did a video about that and I'll post it right here. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the way that we help people to create calmness and clarity for their next chapter of life, take a look at us at brindleandbay.com. Again, thanks for watching the videos. Please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time a new video comes out.